Sermon title, Avila. Subtopic, Elder Youth Wisdom, Grace by God, by Pastor Kevin Quailchild Rodriguez. Come on, everybody. If God is doing good to you, give him a great hand clap of praise. Hey, Kevin, can I have you bring this up, son, please? Oh, baby. All right, we're trying out some new equipment today. Hallelujah. And I hope that it helps to improve the quality of service for our online viewers. I'm going to turn this one off just in case mine runs out of battery. All right, bear with me. There we go. That's turned off. Vita, if I can have you just check to make sure that everything is working properly. I, I, I wasn't able to get on your phone. All right. Whew. God has been so faithful. Amen. I just, I am just in awe of his glory. And uh, I just, it's like Jeremiah would say, uh, I feel shut up in my bones. It comes in from all different directions. And this is in the midst of even much darkness in the world, right? Isaiah 60 uh, reminds us that we arise and shine in the midst of great darkness. So for those of us who have the proper perspective, yeah, we recognize the evil, right? We recognize the things that are going on in the world that are bad. We also recognize the move of God that is working in and through us in our lives. Amen. So come on, one more time. If God has been good to you, let's give him a great hand clap of praise. Hallelujah! Woo! All right. So I suspect that we're going to have much shorter service today. I still feel bad from last week because the watch that I was using last week was a mechanical watch, and I lost track for a whole hour. Of course, I thought I was just up here for 10 minutes. My goodness. So today I'm trying to aim for 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, children, 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 why don't I have you stand? And while you're standing, online viewers, this is your brother, Pastor Quail Child, Living on the Rock Ministries, and we pray and we hope and we trust that today's services bless us all. Amen. In Jesus' name. We're going to go ahead and release the youth here. All right, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for our children. We pray that your anointing will be upon the hearts of the children. Open it up. Open their hearts up here today that they would receive the words of life and their project with simplicity, with great hope, O oh God. Elevate their expectation, but also, O oh Lord, uh, elevate their faith and their trust in you. Lord, we pray a double portion anointing also for the teacher, that, that the teacher would bring forth the message from your heart, O oh God, from the kingdom of heaven, to bless our children here today. Lord, we thank you. We're careful to give you all the praise, honor, glory, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Children, did everything sound good? Okay. Children, you may go to class with your children. Avila, if you could just stay for one moment, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, well, we're going to get right into today's message. We're going to prepare our hearts. So if I could have you all stand with me as we pray in for the word. Kevin, can you get me a bottle of water, son? I thought I brought one up here. Oh, there it is, son. Hallelujah. Thank you, baby. We were practicing songs all the way up here. Now I feel like my throat is trying to be scratchy. So we rebuke you, devil. We're going to be on fire for God this morning. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Prepare our hearts in this congregation. Lord, you have been moving in such an accelerated, awesome, awesome way. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word and what it's doing in our lives. And that as we draw close to you, O oh God, that, Lord, your word would continue to edify us and to build us up in this season. Many of us are, are becoming leaders and are leaders in this congregation, oh God, who, who are blessed with a, a vision from your kingdom. And here today, Lord, as we get into today's message, Lord, we pray and we ask in all humility 
that you give us a double a portion today as we worship you as living sacrifices. Your word is a lamp unto our feet. It puts us on stable, solid ground and no stumbling block when we understand the truth, oh God, because we can discern between right and wrong. And we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit for us, our teacher. We value him. Holy Spirit, take full control here today. Nothing that manifests here, Lord, do we glory in the flesh, but we deflect all our praise, all the honor, all the worship, all our praise goes to you in the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray, amen and amen. Uh, we want to also, uh, you can continue standing. We want to pray for, uh, I'm sorry, what was the, the name? Riley. Riley. We want to pray for Riley and her family. Um, unexpected death, as I understand. And we just want to pray for the family, the comfort uh, for them in this time, in this hour. So let us do this. Heavenly Father, we lift up this petition here today, O oh God, that has been brought forth. And Lord, you know your daughter better than any of us, O oh God, and you know the families involved that are mourning at this time in this hour for her. We pray your peace that surpasses all human understanding would grace the family, O oh God. May your Holy Spirit be there to, to help them in this hour, O oh Lord. No words can explain in the physical what they might be going through, but Lord, through compassion, with all humility, we pray that whatever their needs are, O God, that they lift them up with us as well in faith that, Lord, you will be there to meet their needs, O God. We thank you for this. We also pray for our brother Armando as well, O God. We pray for a quick, swift recovery plan, O Lord. And we pray that your strength befall him as well, O Lord, that he would continue to draw close to you and Lord, we all battle the flesh, oh God. It is a matter of fighting the good fight. So Lord, we pray for his strength in the battle. Lord, we are here to shed tears. We are here to pray and to help him when he feels, if he ever feels, that he cannot be enough to sustain, but by the spirit of your living, you living God, be with him, oh Lord, to sustain him in this time. We pray that he would graduate and, Lord, be fruitful in his life, O oh Lord. Every attack of the enemy we pray against, those schemes, we call them uh, demolished in the name of Jesus, that they would be dismantled. Every plan, every wicked scheme, every curse aimed at his life, we pray against them in the mighty name of Jesus. And, Lord, we pray faith rise and shine in our lives over Armando, over our sister and her family. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. And amen. Come on, let's give God a great hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Whew. All right, we're going to get right into the word today. If you would, turn with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to go to chapter 18. Book of Matthew, chapter 18. And we're going to read verse 3, and the word of the Lord reads, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The, my sermon title today is ours truly, I left it blank on purpose, but ours truly, Avila has been the inspiration of today's message. Subtopic of today's message, which is more telling and what we're going to be talking about here today, is youth elder wisdom graced by God. Youth elder wisdom graced by God. For about the last year now, I've been studying my sister. I can't call her a little girl. She's a young lady. Amen? Uh, and there's certain characteristics about her that have inspired me, 
And when we've been talking about the children lately and how they've confirmed much of the ministry and things, things that I didn't share for five years, I kept secret with the exception of a few, right? I released last week. But for five years, God kept that secret for me, my wife, and a couple other elders in the ministry. But other than that, I, never, I had not released it. But in this time, you know, we are hearing reports of children moving by the Spirit of the living God. And the Word of God is very clear that in these end times, and make no mistake, if it was end times before Jesus died on the cross, how much closer are we are? And we call that the end of end times. Not to scare you, but to have the right perspective so that we are encouraged with the truth so we know how to navigate these times and that we can do it together as believers. Amen? And even to help, get this, the unbelievers. Amen. So, children are really doing something new into my heart. I'm learning more from them from, for, uh, more than ever before. I'm learning from the children. But I love these reports that I'm hearing that the children are prophesying. Things are coming to pass and the leaders are pouring into our children so that they're properly trained and built up in the grace gift. And make no mistake, it's a gift from God that has graced the children. And then today, we're going to be talking about wisdom that comes on from high to bless. And I've only seen this twice now, and the Bible is the second one, where I've seen God grace them with a wisdom that is like an elder. You know, we give much honor to our elders, and for good reason. Our elders have been through some things, trials and tribulations. They've had successes and they've made mistakes. But I find it fascinating that not only the Word of God, and we're going to get, who brought their book of Enoch today? Anybody brought, bring it, okay? All right, we got to get you one. All right. So I'm not the only one. We're not barren up in here, but we will be going to the very uh, beginning where scriptures will kind of convey or discuss this very thing. Amen? And, you know, it is very uh, encouraging to me, but I, that's why I wanted to bring forth this message. When it hit my spirit the way that it did, I wanted us to be vigilant and watch out and be encouraged that even our children are going to be blessed. Now, I've been studying this young lady for a year, and make no mistake, she did, I didn't talk to her. I'm not looking at her for a reason. I did not talk to her about this. But listen, as much as I've been studying her, I know for a fact she's been studying me too. Here's a young lady that I get to watch how most people would say sneaky, right? But it's not sneaky. Sneaky has a, a, a connivingness behind it. There's a hidden agenda. But I've been studying how vigilant she is, like the quail. They're very vigilant, right? That's one of the 12 godly characteristics of the bird quail. But, but vigilant. The Word of God says, in these end times, be sober-minded. Why? So you can be vigilant to know that when the enemy tries to attack, you discern it right away. This is vigilance. She could be playing a game, she'll bamboozle you. Most of you, she probably already has. But I'll just see a little, oh, little eye look here, little eye look there. She is one of the only young women that I know that 20 things, 20 activities could be going on at one time, and she'll understand where every activity, I'm seeing a lot of head nods, because you know you come into agreement that if you've been around this family, and make no mistake how beautiful it is, a reflection also of her parents. This is, for the body of Christ, let me just make this very clear. This is invaluable. Right, Vita? It's invaluable. Right? So what we have and what we will witness, make no mistake, we together will start to witness the manifestation of God's grace gift through the Holy Spirit 
through our children. And we want to make sure, we pray for Avila and this gift that God has graced her with. Amen. As we read here, for us adults, what's, what's all this mean to us in terms of our children? Our children should be ministering to us as well. You will, just like our elders say, I forget which uh, elder said this, but basically, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right? Our elder, uh, one of the elders from one of the tribes, I believe the Lakota tribe, says this, we learn through our children what we've missed in the past. Meaning, by their faith, we realize some things that we missed and messed up along the way, but through our children, they will bless us to bring back to remembrance. And a lot of times, it has to do with faith. How many people do you know, and just let me see a quick show of hands. How many people do you know when you were younger, uh, people had big dreams and they didn't follow through with them, but they had big dreams as a, ch as a child, right? I think all of us know that, right? But see, our children bring those dreams back, especially by their faith, when they live out their dreams and as they work towards them and as they have parents that nourish them in that. Amen? That is, that is awesome. And in these end times, as we get into the scriptures here today, we will be encouraged what God says, not what Pastor Kevin says, what he says about our children and how they will be graced on his, when he appoints it by his will, wisdom that would normally seem that would come from elders. Ooh. Amen. All right, we, Avila, if you want to go back to class, if you, or it's up to you, sister, but uh, either way, but uh, come on, let's give God a great hand clap of praise for Avila, <laughs> who's inspired this message today. I'm really excited. I can't wait to just, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. I see great things. And this isn't just her, okay? <laughs> God's has a way of bringing, when we gather in his name, he don't just bless one. All those who gather in his name, he blesses. He's in our midst. Amen? Praise God. As I mentioned, I've seen this wisdom, and, and look, we're all adults in here, but the garment of not only humility, you know, this young lady has Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, she radiates purity. Radiates it. It can even be, uh, for an adult, intimidating from a child. Such humility, yet purity. Amen. I had... When I got purified, when I got the fire baptism, it was after much sin in my life. Much, and if I could be real, sexual immorality. So I had to get tested in a different way. But how God will use the purity, the pure in garment with humility, right? With what they hold sacred in their heart. And they do this unto the Lord at that age, I can only, like the song says, I can only imagine the greatness in store. It's just like uh, Mother Mary. God had to use a vessel that was pure. Jesus had to come through pure blood that hadn't been stained by anything. And Mary did great exploits for the Lord in her way. Amen. Turn with me now to the book of Enoch because look, I want us to be encouraged by the scriptures and what God does through children. These are, well, I'm just going to give a, a couple of examples because we're going to keep services here short today. <laughs> right, Tish, please forgive me for last week. I still feel bad. We're going to go to the book of Enoch now. First Enoch, chapter 
Book of Enoch, first book of Enoch, chapter 83. And this is subtitled in my Bible, First Dream Vision on the Deluge. First Dream Vision on the Deluge. And the word of the Lord reads, And now, my son, Methuselah, I will show thee all my visions which I have seen, recounting them before thee. Two visions I saw before I took a wife, and the one was quite unlike the other. The first one I was learning to write, the second before I took thy mother, when I saw a terrible vision. And regarding them, I prayed to the Lord. I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather, Mahalel, when I saw in a vision how the heaven collapsed and was borne off, fell to the earth, and when it fell to the earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss. And mountains were suspended on mountains, and hills sank down on hills, and high trees were rent from their stems, and hurled down and sunk in the abyss. And thereupon a word fell into my mouth, and I lifted up my voice to cry aloud, and said, The earth is destroyed. And my grandfather Mahalel waked me as I lay near him, and said unto me, Now, make no mistake, Enoch was just a youth at this time. A youth, a child. Why dost thou cry so, my son? Why dost thou make such lamentation? Right? Lamentation is when you have sorrow, deep sorrow for a situation. And you make that sorrow known. That's lamentation. And I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen and said unto me, and he said unto me, A terrible thing hast thou seen, my son, and a grave moment is thy dream vision as to the secrets of all the sin of the earth. It must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with a great destruction. And now, my son, arise and make petition to the Lord of glory, since thou art the believer, that a remnant may remain on the earth. Let me read that one more time. That a remnant may remain on the earth. That same remnant is the remnant that blessed and allowed you and me to be here today. God found favor first through Enoch, which was then also through Noah. For the generations of the world, I will show everything to thee, my son, my Methuselah, and when I had gone forth below and seen the heaven and the sun rising in the east and the moon setting in the west and a few stars and the whole earth and everything as he had known in the beginning, then I blessed the Lord of judgment and extolled him because he had made the sun to go forth from the windows of the east. And he ascended and rose on the face of the heaven and he set out and kept traversing the path shown unto him. Chapter 84, the very next page, where the Lord reads, And I lifted up my hands in righteousness and blessed the Holy and Great One and spake with breath of my mouth and with the tongue of flesh which God has made for the children of the flesh of men that they should speak therewith. And he gave them breath and a tongue and a mouth that they should speak therewith. And make no mistake, King David was also a young child who God predestined to be a king, even while King Saul was being a knucklehead, being a false prophet, once was anointed by God to prophesy. And see, that's what we see a lot of times in the world today. People who started out with humility. This scares the heebie-jeebies out of me, because I know it can happen to me, and that's why I ask you to pray for me, right? I have seen people fall short in this way, but this is what King David says in the Psalms, Everything that has breath, let them praise the Lord. Enoch here is saying, as a child, with such great wisdom, God gave me breath to praise his name. God says that, you know, if my children don't bless me, I'll have my rocks bless me. I'll have the animals, the animals already do, bless the creator of the heavens and the earth. But how much more when God give us free will, an opportunity to have the character of him, 
How much more like Enoch as a child saying here, I'm going to bless the Lord with the tongue of flesh that he gave me to bless his name. Blessed be thou, O Lord King, great and mighty in thy greatness, Lord of the whole creation of the heaven, King of kings, and God of the whole world. And thy power and kingship and greatness abide forever and ever. And throughout all generations, thy dominion. A child speaking these words. A child. And all the heavens are thy throne forever, and the whole earth thy footstool forever and ever. Another reference that... that, that King David uses in the Psalms that God would put his, his enemies as a footstool to wait on the Lord and that the Lord would fight his battle. You see how some of the greats of even Old Testament, they knew. They knew of Enoch. They spoke of some of the same exact things. And in the book of Hebrews, it talks about how great the faith of Enoch was. But here we are blessed today to hear the living words of God through Enoch, which is, as far as I'm concerned, some of the earliest scriptures that bless you and I today. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 4, And now the angels of thy heavens are guilty of trespass. Right? Because some of them have fallen. Right? And upon the flesh of man abideth thy wrath until the great day of judgment. And now, O God and Lord and King, great King, I implore and beseech thee to fulfill my prayer. What's he doing? He would have lamentation. You don't have lamentation for yourself. A prophet, an apostle that has regional influence and regional authority to fill the region pain. In our secret places, we will make lamentations to the Lord. That's what Enoch was doing as a child. My fire baptism after confirmation of things, it didn't come until having been anointed in other areas in my life and having been tested in those anointings. But here's Enoch, a youth, with this awesome anointing of God speaking and extolling and blessing his name, which still today blesses you and me in the teaching and the knowledge and understanding of what God has in store with our children. Amen. To leave me a posterity on earth and not destroy all the flesh of man and make the earth without inhabitant so that there should be an eternal destruction. He's saying, Lord, please relent. Relent. Make no mistake, at one point, God regretted having made mankind, but he himself repented of that. But Enoch is saying, Lord, I know there's a judgment coming on the land. That's what the deluge was for. But Lord, please preserve a remnant. Please preserve some that we may continue, those of us who want to love you and seek you with all diligence and love you with our fullness of heart. Those of us, Lord, there's some of us still. My grandfather, me, Lord, I'm, I'm seeing giants out there. They're, they're starting to eat all the acquisitions of mankind, and they're acting like fools. I see all that, but I also see a little pocket of people, oh, Lord, please relent. This is Enoch's heart here. And the great prophets of old, even in the Old Testament, through the books, the 66 books that we know as the common Bible, they had one thing in common. They all had a heart for the people, not for themselves. One of our elders said this a year ago. I had it in my sermon, and I can't find the reference. Please, somebody find it. If you do, let me know, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this thing down and document it so I can never forget it. But this elder said this. Be careful not to follow a leader who loves himself or herself more than the people they're supposed to serve. Amen. That's wisdom. And now, my Lord, destroy from the earth the flesh which has aroused thy wrath, but the flesh of righteousness and uprightness established as a plant of the eternal seed. Ah, the seed. And hide not thy face from the prayer of thy servant, O Lord. 
Enoch making this lamentation. So young, yet so wise. And in here, as we read the first chapter, what was it? Uh, 80, 83. He, he, at one point, if you caught it, words just started to flow through me. Words of holiness just started to flow through me to bless and exalt the name of the Lord. There's nothing greater that when you are in divine prayer with God, in faith, praying in faith and in spirit, where God will interrupt what you think are intelligible words that you are thinking in your mind, you're manifesting them through your lips, but then God will begin to manifest prayer. And I've seen him do it, not just through me, but I've seen him do it through my son. And sometimes you'll just be at the altar, people will want prayer, and you'll just be not making a big scene. There have been times people were completely limp as I was praying for them. And I said, Lord, I don't want them to fall down. Keep them standing. And he kept them standing. Fully limp. In my hand, I could feel how limp they were. Yet, by the Spirit of God, they were still standing. The words that were coming through my mouth, manifested from on high, would begin to flow through that individual. Enoch makes reference to this manifestation where the Holy Spirit would begin to flow through his own lips to exalt King of kings, Lord of lords. Amen. Guess what, church? We get to experience together. When we come expecting, when we say, Lord, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. <laughs> Lord, I, I need some encouragement today. Uh, before I hit those doors, Lord, uh, do something new in my life. When you come with an expectancy, when you come in faith, when you come believing, he's going to move. He's been moving in our lives. And we can continue to expect this. But what keeps the anointing is our garment of humility. Enoch was just blessed that he had a divine understanding. I'll talk about one day about cross, cancel, uh, cross cancellation. We, we learn this, and, and I'm not a mathematician, so please don't think that I'm smart because I'm not. I still struggle with math. I had to take some of my statistics class twice because I failed them the first time. And I tried my behind off. But in, in basic algebra, you learn of cross-cancellation. I think that's one of the steps, right, to cross-cancellation. I find it very fascinating that God used Enoch to help manage the affairs in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, But God used himself to, through his son, Jesus Christ, to come to help manage the affairs, to bring governance to us when we get right with God. His blessed word, his Holy Spirit, now governs us. When we get baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? The blessed thing that that represents is you are born again. Even our elders on the Hopi tribe talk about being born again and make no mistake. But see, God used humans to bring order by his divine order to set in place and to bring all his angelic hosts in all humility. But remember, Enoch walked faithfully with God for three years hundred years. Could you imagine that? He lived 365 years before he was taken up in fiery chariots. He never died in the flesh. God used him and like Jesus had transfiguration and was chilling with Elijah who never died of the flesh either and Moses who did die of the flesh. Moses died <laughs> He was buried and nobody could find his body. And Satan 
And the angelic host, Michael, the archangel, they fought against his body. That's another teaching. And by the way, the book is going to explain a lot of this in detail. But it's fascinating. In Jesus' transfiguration, before he hung on the cross, he fellowshiped in spirit, partly with the dead and the living. God used Enoch, who walked faithfully with him for 300 years, to help manage the order in heaven. And after there was order in heaven, because remember, a third of the angels were influenced by Satan, who was already chilling down here, causing havoc, right? And they came down. And according to the book of Enoch, it was over 200 angels at that time that were once in divine order and operation for God, but they rebelled against God. Then Jesus came to help bring order, to bring the new covenant on the earth, to help mankind to bring harmony with one another. Fascinating. Fascinating. Turn with me now to the book of Enoch. We're going to go to uh, chapter 90. We're just going to read a few verses. Chapter 90 of the first book of Enoch. Chapter 90, we're going to read from verses 38 through 42. Thirty-eight through forty-two, starting at the second sentence of that. And I saw till all their generations were transformed, and they all became white bulls, and the first among them became a lamb. And that lamb became a great animal, and had great, great black horns on its head. And the Lord of the sheep, let me read that again, the Lord of the sheep rejoiced over it and over all the oxen. And I slept in their midst, and I awoke and saw everything. Again, this is Enoch having a dream as a child before he was ever married. Way before he was ever married, this was the second dream that he, this was part of the second dream that he had. This is the vision which I saw while I slept, and I woke, awoke, and blessed the Lord of righteousness and gave him glory. Then I wept with a great weeping, and my tears stayed not till I could no longer endure it. When you have a heart for people, it's uncontrollable. It's an unconditional, whether you deserve it or not, because you know the grace of God and his tender mercies he, he shed for you and me. But this is Enoch in this uh, in this, in this, in this uh, uh, mourning here, broken for the earth. Remember Jesus on the cross. Make no mistake, this is the character. You ready? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's unconditional. That's unconditional. This was similar character to a child for a world that became perverted, corrupt, wicked. Then I wept with the great weeping in my tears, saying, not till I could no longer endure it. When I saw they flowed on account of what I had seen, for everything shall come and be fulfilled, and all the deeds of men in their order were shown to me. On that night I remembered the first dream. And because of it, I wept and was troubled because I had seen that vision. God reveals prophetic things, revelatory things, encouraging things. Things, you know, some people don't even tell me their dreams no more. I had people on the Navajo, and at one time I was like, my goodness, I must have had like two dreams almost every week. I could, somebody was giving me details, but some of them, can I tell you what they were? They didn't know how to interpret it, or these folks that were coming to me, they didn't know how to interpret them. I would get it, get on my knees and I would pray, but sometimes it was God saying, I need to wake them up. They ain't right. 
them dreams details stopped. But you know, that ain't because uh, Kevin's trying to do something. No, you asked the man of God to do something. He went on his knees, he prayed, and God had a message for you. It is to help. The gifts of the Holy Spirit will be teaching on these gifts real soon. Because get ready. We're going to start watching the gifts of the Holy Spirit move. Move. Not to be hoarded. Uh, I just prophesied over your life. I, I expect $35 by the end of this service, please. No. Freely. God gave freely. You got a line waiting to hear a prophet? You better smell that thing really quick because God gave freely. So when I tell you we're going to be watching the flow of the Holy Spirit, it's not for us to hoard. But as Jesus gave freely, it's for the body of Christ to also to the community give freely. Amen? God used Enoch. God spoke to him as a child through dreams. <laughs> and as you start to learn more about Enoch and, and, and everything that, every scripture that he wrote, one, two, and three, all his books were written while he was translated in the heavenlies. Wow. These books, the common books, right? For the most part, I mean, you could, you could say the book of Revelation may have been in that third heaven realm when Apostle John wrote it. But other than that, these books, yes, they were inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it was like the Holy Spirit wrote the book. When the, when, when the outline for the book that I write about the unforgivable sin I never saw myself being an author, but I can tell you, as I stand here fearfully in the presence of the Lord, but yet so immersed in his grace and mercy, he called me to write the book, to teach. The outline came in the middle of the night. Trevor was still awake because his schedule is off ours. He had me write the entire outline in like an hour and a half. Everything that he wanted me to teach on, he had me write it down. Then, I took the time. I wrote most of it in the first six months, but I prayed, Lord, not my will, yours. Lord, uh, Holy Spirit, come and, and bring the message. Bring the teaching points. So I understand what it means to value the holy scribes of the scriptures being influenced by the Holy Spirit as you write. It is the greatest, giving God the greatest honor. Not leaning, right, Kev? Not leaning on my understanding, because that will get me in trouble. I'll misrepresent the scriptures. I'll start perverting the scriptures. No, Lord, your will be done. See, that was Enoch's reverence to God. And every one of his books were, were written in the heavenlies. Pretty fascinating. And yet translated for, to be a blessing to you and I. Found in caves. And, you know, the, the deluge happened. They were already protected in caves made of rock. But these books were translated from written scriptures on tablets. And even the deluge couldn't erase those words and they bless you and me today amen now as we close up here today let's get into the primary scripture talking about the wisdom found in the youth that God will grace a vial is the second one that I've seen this in my whole life second second but this scripture, when I first read it, when I was first getting into my word, this was the one place God had me highlight. Because coming up as even a special education person, this particular scripture had a unique blessing for me, and it's blessed me ever since. And that was probably, whew, at least eight, nine years ago when I first came across this scripture. Turn with me to the book of Psalms, chapter 119. Book of Psalm, chapter 119.
We're going to read from 97 through 104. <clears throat> when you get there, say amen. Book of Psalm, chapter 119, verses 97, starting at verses 97. And the word of the Lord reads, oh, how, you know what? Those of you who have found this place, let's read it together. Can we do that? Can we read this scripture aloud? Father God, give us ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church here for your glory in Jesus' name. One, two, huh? It's okay. Read your version. Just read it out loud with me. One, two, three. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. Your commands are always with me and make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. One more time. I have more insight than all my teachers. For I meditate on your statutes. I have more understanding than the elders. One more time. I have more understanding than the elders. For I obey your precepts. I have kept my feet from every evil path so that I might obey your word. I have not departed from your laws, for you yourself have taught me how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your precepts, therefore I hate every wrong path. Wow. You know, God loves our kids. And when he chooses to grace with the wisdom that we read here, can you imagine how obnoxious it would sound if I went into a university, for example? I mean, try to paint the picture here. Uh, I'm smarter than all of you because I listen to the word of God. His ways are my ways are ingrained in my heart. That's how, you know, the new covenant in many cases with those who mourn for people, who had compassion for people, they did what God always intended. The heart. You can never be perfect. You can never follow the law perfectly. But when your heart was right, and you did your best with what God taught you, when you made a mistake, you used the tools that God taught you to use. This reverential worship, even in the Old Testament, even in Enoch's time, blessed God's heart. And it's saying here, those of you who have that, because remember what the Word says, faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing what? The Word of God, right? We know that when even Jesus was a, 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 a fairly, before, even before he started his ministry, he was sitting in the synagogue as a normal custom, like this, right? Going to church as normal custom. But it was his turn to read the scriptures, and it fell on Isaiah, where it talked about the coming, the prophecy of Jesus. And he, here he is now see, see, sitting among the elders. And he read the scriptures of the coming of the Messiah. He said to the congregation and to the elders, could you imagine Jesus wasn't even, I don't think, he, he might have been 30 at the time, right around 30, roughly speaking. These elders had, had went to school, went to what we would call a, a seminary school, biblical school, right? Go to the university. Jesus had the Word in him. Jesus had the Holy Spirit in him. And as he read those words, he says, what I read to you today is fulfilled in your sight. It is fulfilled in your hearing. Jesus was saying, I am the Messiah and I stand before you. This prophecy, Isaiah prophesied, the servant of the, of, of the living God, my Father in heaven, I stand before you Letting you know this is fulfilled in your 
hearing. Jesus, even as a child, remember his parents forgot about him for three days. You remember that story, Arturo? Jesus, they were traveling. Jesus ain't nowhere to be seen. Three days later, they realize after three days have gone by, baby Jesus ain't with us. Youth Jesus ain't with us. You know where he was? Sitting in a church setting, listening to the elders teach Old Testament. And as he would engage discussions, the Word of God says, it was as he had the authority of a teacher himself. Amen? Avila is today's message, inspiration. I count it a great honor and a joy to be able to witness that. God is going to move in ways that we can't even fully understand. But I have expectancy. I can't wait. Can't wait that, that w nobody gets the glory but God. It is so supernatural, so amazing, so wonderful that he gets all <laughs> the glory. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Acts as we close out here today. Chapter 2. Book of Acts, chapter 2. <clears throat> Verse 17. Book of Acts, chapter 2. When you get there, say amen. Book of Acts, chapter 2. Verse 17. And the word of the Lord reads, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. But make no mistake, children are dreaming dreams too because we just saw Enoch had a couple when he was a youth. Amen? The gifts of the Holy Spirit, book of Corinthians says, that the gifts are distributed by God's grace according to his will. Church, let us pay attention to our children. Let's nourish our children because in these end times, God wants to flow through even our children. He's calling children right now. I felt this couple years ago. He's using the compassion. I feel in my heart, in these end times, and you, the very first message, and the very first message I have to preach whether I want to or not, when I go upon predominantly indigenous lands, I have to preach the same message the first time in that land. I have to. It's a command by God. When we rolled out our ministry, some of you were here since then. <laughs> in, I believe, March of 2019. The soil is rich. When the calling came, God says, I've already prepared the hearts. The soil represents the condition of our heart. Now, whether or not the seed of life, which that's going to be a children's book that I'm writing after this book, but the seed of life is the Word of God. The Word of God must be placed in good soil so it can take root, properly watered, have light, all these elements, right? Same with us as the Word of God, because some of us, we get the Word of God. We get blessed. You heard me preach on this too. You blessed me, Lord, now I'm walking away. You did. I, I got what I needed from you, you know, and it, that won't last too long. But when you're rooted in that truth, <laughs> that's the key. How do we help? Oh, you backslid. That's okay. Look, I'm the worst backslider, brother. Uh, but you got, you got divine hair in your lungs. You got another day. You got another chance. How do we help our children? How do we help the youth? How do we help the young get rooted? Tish, rooted in the truth. Rooted in the rock of ages. Rooted in the rock of ancient days. Right? Our elders talk about rocks as what? The grandfathers. No greater grandfather than the Christ. 
who was foreshadowed from the beginning. And as the Hopi people says, Masao is the beginning and will be the end. Scripture says it's the same way, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. This rock, which we mount our life on, keeps us stable. We want our children to be stable. I'm believing in these end times, the children are going to be the ones to bring a shift. Listen, I believe our children are going to bring a shift because Many of them, you see children on, you know, different pictures, and you have a white boy, a black boy, and a, a native all playing together. Having absolutely no thought of prejudice because it's in it, in them. It is na natural in them to want to love because we come from our first love in the first place. That's why he says, come back to your first love when we become knuckleheads. Hello? Preaching to myself, too. <laughs> come back to your first love. It's in it. It's, it's built in them to want to love and, and be around each other. Not having any conditions of what, what color you are, what you know, status this and that and this, that, and the other. But love. And that's how we have to come back to. But our children, God is going to use their precious garment, like Avila, to help bring a, a shift. Because God will relent. He will relent. His judgment's going to come, whether we like it or not. But he will relent. And it's going to, the relenting comes from the pure in heart, who earnestly pray. Enoch learned to pray when he was a child. He didn't even get credit for that because it says he walked faithfully with God for 300 years, but he was alive for 65 years before that. And reverence God in the way that we read today as a child. Our children are going to bring a shift in the generation. If there's any hope... <laughs> You see what's out there. You see how wicked. Just think of it like this. Since COVID hit the land, when we first started to hear about COVID, you just keep your eyes open and you just watch. You see the difference out there. It don't take much. But if there's any hope of anything to happen, it's going to be through our children where these pockets of end time revival are going to take place where we will begin to see the outpouring, as it said here, and it's also spoken in the book of Amos. <laughs> Amen. Where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will become all, will be poured out upon all flesh. It's not, it wasn't just for the day of Pentecost. It's for now too. Amen. I want to see our children do great things for the Lord. Amen. Write books, become doctors. Can you imagine 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, that we would have lawyers and doctors sitting in the congregation to bless the community for their services from beyond what many would say. I, I preached on this before, from, reser from reservation to preservation, that the Lord would bless those who were oppressed for so long. Isaiah chapter 60 is our testimony together upon these indigenous lands. Isaiah 60. We will go in deep teaching on this one one day. But make no mistake, the perceived last in line are going to take charge in these end times for God's honor and glory. And I can tell you, there are two people that have been most oppressed, depressed, and, and there's more blood shed upon these lands, which were indigenous lands to begin with, with the blacks and the native people. There's no more blood shed on these lands innocently than those two people. And from those two will be a collide of a great force of love. And it won't just be for the blacks and the native people, no, God's going to use the perceived loss of life to take lead in the charge because they came from pain and suffering. God responds to that as we see here in Enoch. 
Amen. He responded. We are going to see that response. The leading is to be a blessing for everybody. Because the kingdom of heaven is diverse. Look to your neighbor and say, the kingdom of heaven is diverse. The kingdom of heaven is diverse. It's diverse. Come on, stand to your feet. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray out here today. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you <laughs> that your word became flesh, dwelt among us, and now, Jesus, you're the perfect example for us. Let us take heed to your word. Help us, O oh Lord. How do we nurture spiritually our children? How do we pray for them? Lord, help us that we would feed our children spiritually to see this end time revival even be a blessing through the vessels of our children, oh God. Lord, we thank you for today's word, how children have a way of inspiring us, but how inspiring it is when they're inspiring us and your word about them inspires us, collide together to bring a love for us. Lord, seal this teaching in our heart today with your Holy Spirit. That Lord, if we lose any sight of this, bring it back to our remembrance so we are constantly, diligently praying for our children. Lord, let us use our children in the ministry. I believe some children are going to be writing books, maybe even making movies, oh God, that are to bless the community. Hallelujah. For your honor and for your glory. Hallelujah. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you here today. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Come on. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise.